TC here back with another episode of TC Talks. I'm going to be talking all about those Chicago Bulls and that game three last night. But first, let me just say, please subscribe, guys. We're on the hunt for 50 subscribers right now. We are trying to be able to live stream our live show that we do on SportstownChicago.com called The Winner Circle. So you guys being able to subscribe will help us out a lot. We really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's talk about those Chicago Bulls. Now, first thing I want to highlight is uh, Milwaukee did something that I was not expecting. So, with Middleton out, they kind of went with a smaller lineup to kind of match the Chicago Bulls. And Chicago really did not have an answer for that. They had an electric game, and honestly, uh, Giannis was able to just lock it down enough for, you know, they're not, not really need another big guy in there. He was out rebounding the Bulls. He was out powering the Bulls. Really didn't need another big guy in there to help him out. And that's honestly what I was saying for what we've all been saying here on TMT, the winner's circle and all that is Vucevic is not a good candidate for, you know, who's going to be down low. And honestly, for Chicago, they don't have a solid big man. And that's something they're going to have to correct this upcoming offseason because, honestly, every other asset of the Bulls is good. Defense, the biggest thing is not having a, a big man. And honestly, Vucevic being such a liability down there in the paint. I mean, it is abysmal seeing what he does down there. And that constant need to have Caruso crash and help out Vucevic left all those open threes for the Milwaukee Bucks last night, and that's going to be the tale of, of, of the series. If Chicago cannot lock down that paint, if Giannis is just able to drive and constantly score, having Caruso, having Levine, having all those other guys crash to help Vooch because Vooch isn't going to be able to pick him up, that's going to lead to all those open threes that they've been taking. And honestly, that's something Chicago's got to correct. A little too many threes from Chicago as well. But honestly, overall, it's not like somebody was shooting ridiculous. Kobe White was the... Uh, the worst suspect in that case, one for six. But honestly, six attempts isn't something to be, oh my goodness, you're doing too much about, right? I mean, six attempts is a good average, especially if you are out there on the perimeter supposed to be taking those shots. So not going to try to knock him too much for that. But overall, as a team, too many threes from Chicago. And honestly, it's not that the Bulls played bad. It's that Milwaukee just played better. And the biggest thing that I saw from Chicago that I didn't like was the fact that DeMar DeRozan only had 12 shot attempts. Now, I understand. I was talking about how he can't be playing all these minutes, doing all this and that. He's going to get worn out. And I, I understand that he played less. I understand that they kind of followed TC's advice and they followed it a little too well. DeMar only 32 minutes, I believe it was, in that game. Maybe 30. But still a big decrease from the past few games. Like 14, 12 minutes less than the previous game. Uh, 10, 8 minutes less than the first game. So that's a, that's a very interesting uh, uh, decision there. And it's not even just those minutes, though. It's not the reduction of minutes. How do you go from taking over 20 shots to averaging to, to shooting 12 you know DeMar is that guy on the Chicago Bulls like it or hate it he's got to be taking at least 20 shots a game that's got to be the bare minimum for him I mean honestly the way he was shooting the ball the way he does shoot the ball especially with that high pick and roll he is going to be able to be so successful against that team even when they do go small yeah sure they got that extra half of a half sack quarter step that the big man don't and I understand that you know maybe that's gonna uh deter DeRozan from being able to take those uh jump shots like he always does but honestly he's good enough he's gonna be able to hold in there the other thing that I really want to say is I really did like uh the fact that Io played more in this game and honestly he kind of showed for it a few points five assists few rebounds he had it on lock. I really do like the way that he played in that game. And the thing is, above all else, is he looked comfortable in that series or in that game. So major credit to him. I hope he gets more time in this next game. But DeMar's definitely got to get more of the ball. And same thing with uh, Zach Levine. Sorry. I mean, so many names that I'm trying to remember that sometimes it's hard to keep track. And it's not like I got a script. I'm out here. Uh, before work trying to bring you guys the latest news. So uh, 
yeah, Levine, he's got to be a bigger role too. I know he kind of had a little bit more time on the bench this game as well, but still, I'm not talking about you know, the time necessarily. I'm talking about their impact when they're on the court. They need to be much more involved in what's going on. And I know Levine, you know, was a little bit more uh, involved than DeRozan was overall because it kind of seemed like DeRozan was a bench player in this game. I mean, Patrick Williams played just as much, if not more, than he did and scored just about the same. Or no, he didn't. He only scored one point now that I think about it. And that was after 0 for 6 he was in this game, uh, shooting from the field, only got a free throw. So TC was wrong about that. Patrick Williams kind of looked out of place. Sorry, guys. Everything I say for Chicago keeps happening. And, you know, the one time it went good. So for this time... This is what I'm going to say. Chicago was most successful when they had Caruso, Levine, and DeRozan all on the court at the same time. And those three going small, having that 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 small lineup or small men on the court really works out for Chicago. And honestly, the one thing that I would like to see them change is maybe, uh, dang it, dang it, who's that, who's that other center they have? Tony... Tony something. I don't know. But their other center who really played pretty good for what he did, I really think he needs to get a little bit more playing time, especially because Tristan Thompson, I mean, he's just not getting it done either. Vucevic isn't getting it done. And honestly, I know you got to compete, but once Chicago goes down 3-1, to one, or if they go down 3-1, to one, because they're going to come back and it's going to be 2-2 two to two, tied up going back to Milwaukee. But when they're down... Uh, that you gotta let those guys play at the end of the day is what I'm getting at. You gotta let um, those guys who are gonna come back next year be on that bench, help you try to win that championship next year. You gotta have them have some experience. I mean, how many times do you make it to the NBA Finals or NBA Playoffs? I mean, the Bulls barely made it in this year and that's because of injuries and all that. So who's to say something like that isn't to happen next year? You know, maybe these, these same exact guys aren't gonna be the same bench players, but you have to assume like Io, he's not going anywhere. Tony, probably not going anywhere. You know, Tristan Thompson, maybe going somewhere else. Vooch, maybe he's going to be going somewhere else, but I doubt it. He's He scores too much. He's worth too much money. But uh, I'm going to leave it there because I only have a few minutes left before work. Got to enjoy my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. This is not advertisement. In fact, I don't like Dunkin' Donuts, but they do have the cheapest coffee uh, that is also through a drive through in the area. So shout out to them for that. But uh yeah, if you can, make your coffee at home. I'm just too lazy. Until next time, like, share, and subscribe. Peace out.